So there you go. There's a tendency among the modern individual to see himself as somehow separate from the natural world, the real world. This is understandable. Um, a lot of modern people live in a world of concrete and steel. The only wildlife they encounter on a regular basis are raccoons, pigeons, and mice. Stemming from this attitude of derealization is the belief that human endeavor beyond that of the hunter-gatherer is necessarily in opposition to the processes and well-being of the natural world. Even among farmers, those who have more of a connection to the real world than most, there is sort of an antagonistic relationship with the, the natural world. Many farmers begrudge the deer for the corn they take. Every bushel of corn that gets eaten by the deer, well, that's a bushel less profit. Among anthropologists, there's sort of this old-fashioned categorization, right? The perception is that people go from hunter-gatherer societies to agricultural societies. Now, what they're missing is the middle road, the hunter-farmer societies. I want to talk about that today. As part of the Six Nations farming practice, it was understood that you were supposed to plant twice as much as you needed. So you'd calculate how much food you're going to need, how much seeds you need to save for the next year, and a little bit of margin for error in case the crops do badly or this is a poor year for hunting or fishing. You calculate how much you need there and then you double it. So for one acre of three sisters you can feed about 10 people. So let's say that you live in a longhouse of 80 people. Your family would have to plant eight acres. However, what people would do is they'd plant 16 acres. Plant twice as much as you think you're going to need. Now, the reason you do that is for the deer, right? You would plant double your, your need in the expectation that the deer are going to come and take some. Now, unlike the modern farmer who begrudges the deer every corn cob they take, or every corn cob taken is a profit lost, the Iroquois farmer would welcome it as part of a symbiotic relationship. The reason being that you want the deer population to do well, right? You want them to be plentiful so that they'll be easier to find when you go out hunting. You want them to be big and strong so that you get lots of meat off of them. And more than any of that, you want the deer to be close. Now, most hunter-gatherer societies are nomadic. Now, the reason being is that if you stay in one place and hunt deer, the deer are going to learn to stay away from that place, right? If you live in a village for 10 years, after that 10 years, there's not going to be any deer nearby. You're going to have to go further and further away to hunt because the deer are going to learn, okay, this is the place where people come chasing after us with pointy sticks. Let's not go there. However, agriculture, particularly if you've got a bit of surplus, gives the deer a reason to stick around. Corn and beans are calorie dense, especially compared to a lot of the stuff a deer would ordinarily get, right? There's a lot of calories in a corn cob, a lot more than grass. So if you've got these concentrations of calorie dense foods, the deer are going to hang around, right? They're going to come to the village in late summer, all throughout the fall, right? because they want those high calorie foods to build up some fat before winter. To bring this back to what I said earlier, it's a symbiotic relationship. The farmer provides some food for the deer, and in return, the deer provide food for the farmer. Right? And it's a net positive for both sides. So this is what I mean by a hunter-farmer society. It's almost like a, a pseudo-farm for the deer. Right? Rather than penning them and controlling every aspect of their life, you just you plant extra food so that the deer will come close and stick around, so that the deer will thrive, and so that you can reap the benefits thereof. Anyway, this has been a bit of a ramble. It's just an idea that I find really compelling. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.